Hello, hi students. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss previous year need questions from laws of motion and work power energy chapters. Okay. Our first question is: A ball of mass 0.15 kg is dropped from a height 10 meter, strikes the ground and rebounds to the same height. The magnitude of impulse imparted to the ball is nearly. Okay. Now, what are we supposed to do? He told that this is a ball of mass 0.15 kg. Okay, of mass 0.15 kg. M is equal to 0.15 kg. It is dropped from a height of h. Okay, it is dropped from a height h that is equal to 10 meters. Strikes the ground. after it strikes this ground and rebounds back to the same height okay again it goes back to the same height the magnitude of impulse imparted to the ball is you have to calculate impulse is equal to how much so you have to calculate impulse okay first let me take uh, the initial momentum before hitting the ground as pi and the final momentum after uh, hitting the ground that is after rebounding let me take it as pf okay next we know that in the case of a freely falling body if you use the formula v square minus u square is equal to 2as okay the velocity after traveling a distance h will be v is equal to root 2gh okay that means this ball will hit the ground with a velocity of v is equal to root 2gh okay now since it is rebound after rebounding it is going to the same height means it goes back with the same velocity which is v is equal to root 2gh okay we know that the formula for momentum is p is equal to mv that is mass into velocity now if you observe it pi will be equal to pf the reason is its mass is same and its velocity is also same both uh, vi and vi vf will be root 2gh okay so both momentums will be equal now now let me take this downward direction as positive okay now what did he ask us to calculate he asked us to calculate impulse we know that the formula for impulse is i is equal to change in momentum that is pf minus pi and we know that pi is equal to pf that is equal to p let me take it as p which is nothing but mv okay now pf pf is the final momentum which is in upward direction that is opposite to our uh, positive direction so i can take pf as minus p minus pi pi is the initial momentum which is in downward direction that is towards our uh, positive direction then i can take uh, pi as positive p that is p that is equal to minus 2p so this negative sign says that this impulse is opposite to our uh, positive direction that is this impulse is acting in the upward direction so the impulse acting on the ball by the ground is equal to 2 pv 2 p that is equal to 2 into mass into velocity that is equal to 2 into mass into root 2 gh now let us try to substitute <coughs> 2 into mass of the ball is 0.15 into root 2 into g that is 10 into height from what height did we drop 10 meters okay that is equal to 20 into 0.15 root 2 that is equal to 3 root 2 that is equal to 4.2 means uh, it's impulse no so the formula the unit for impulse will be 4.2 kg meter per second so the answer for this uh, question is first answer okay now let us go to our uh, next question our next question is 
A ball is released from height S from the surface of the earth. At a certain height, its kinetic energy is three times its potential energy. The height from the surface of the earth and the speed of the ball at that instant are respectively. Okay. Now let us see what he said. He said that this is a ball. This is a ball which is released from a height S. Yes. Okay. This ball is released from a height S yes from the surface of the earth. At a certain height, take let us take that uh, certain height h. At certain uh, height x. Okay. At a height, its kinetic energy is three times its potential energy. That is. Ke is equal to three times of its potential energy. The height from the surface of the earth and the speed of the ball at this instant is okay. Now, what is he asking us to calculate? He is asking us to calculate the value of x, which is nothing but the height from the surface of the earth, comma v. V is the velocity at our uh, chosen point. Let me take that chosen point as a. Okay. Now you have to calculate x and v. Okay. Now let us uh, try to solve this uh, question by using a shortcut. Okay. We know that this ball is at a height s yes, from the surface of the earth. That is, at maximum height, the value of potential g will be p e is equal to m g s. Yes. If m is the mass of the body, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and s is the height. Okay, and at this point, the total energy will be will be equal to mgs only. The reason is kinetic energy is zero. Okay, now as this ball starts falling down, what happens? The value of potential energy will decrease, and the value of kinetic energy will increase. Okay, and at half of the maximum height, that is at uh, s by two. What happens is the value of potential energy will be equal to the value of kinetic energy. But the condition given is kinetic energy should be thrice that of uh, potential energy. That means the value of kinetic energy should should still increase because at s by two we came to a conclusion that uh, p is equal to ke. But according to this condition, the value of ke should still increase. Increase. Okay, that is, it should be three times of its potential energy. That means this ball should still move forward. That is towards the downward direction. That means this distance from the ground should be less than s by two. Okay, then only what will happen? This condition will be satisfied. That is, PE is equal to three times of KE will be satisfied. Okay. Now, if you see the options. For second option, that distance is s by two, so which is not possible. So second option will not be correct. If we compare the rest of the options, that is one, three, four, the value of x is given as s by four, which is common. That means if x is equal to s by four, surely th the condition that is uh, p e is equal to three times of k e will be satisfied. That is at a distance of x is equal to s by four from the ground, this condition will be satisfied. Okay, so so we got uh, the value of x. Now we have to calculate the value of v. <coughs> we, uh, so now this we came to a conclusion that this distance will be s by four. S by four. That is this distance will be s by four. Then. This distance, that is the remaining distance, will be s minus s by four. That is equal to three s by four. Okay. Now you have to calculate the velocity of uh, the ball when it reaches uh, edi, uh, when it reaches the point A. That is when it reaches the distance three s by four. Okay. Now in the case of uh, freely falling body, if you use the formula. V square minus U square is equal to 2as. We'll get the value of the formula for velocity after traveling a distance of uh, y as v is equal to root 2gy, where y 
is equal to s minus x. Okay, that is this distance. Distance from here to here. That is equal to s minus s by 4. That is equal to 3s by 4. Okay, so that is equal to root over 2 into g. g into y will be s by 3s by 4. Okay, so this 2, it will cancel twice. That is equal to root 3gs by 2. Okay, so at the point A, where kinetic energy is 3 times of its potential energy, the ball reach a distance of s by 4 to reach the point A, or that is the ball travel a distance of s by 4 to reach the point A, and at A, the value of velocity is root over 3gs by 2. Okay, here what happened is, so, uh, out of, uh, excluding second option, for rest of the options, the value of uh, x is s by 4. Okay. If by chance, if out of these three options, one of the value of x is less than s by 2, some other value which is less than s by 2, then this uh, strategy will not work. Okay. Then we have to go to our uh, normal procedure. Now let us go to our uh, normal procedure. So, this is a ball of uh, mass m, which is released from a height s, okay, and this is the point, this is our uh, chosen point A, where kinetic energy is 3 times that of potential energy, okay. Let me take this distance as uh, x, then this distance will be s minus x, s minus x, okay. Now, at A, the value of potential g will be pe is equal to mgh that is equal to mg into x okay then the value of uh, the value of kinetic energy will be ke is equal to half m v square where v is the velocity at a okay we know that uh, in the case of a freely falling body the velocity after uh, the velocity of a body after traveling a distance uh, y will be v is equal to root over 2gy where y is s minus x here that is equal to that is v square is equal to 2g into s minus x okay so now the given condition is pe is equal to thrice that of kinetic energy that is mgx is equal to 3 times of half m v square okay this m this m will get cancelled gx is equal to 3 times of v square v square is 2g into s minus x whole divided by 2 this will get cancelled uh, then gg will get cancelled then what will you get x is equal to 3 into s minus x okay if we solve you will get the value of uh, x as x is equal to s by 4. Okay. So, means this distance will be s by 4. Okay. This distance will be s by 4. Now, you have to calculate the velocity at a. We already know that uh, the formula for velocity at a is v is equal to root over 2g into according to this. Okay. According to this. v is equal to root over 2g into s minus x that is equal to root over 2g into s is s x will be s by 4 that is equal to root over 2g into 3s by 4 that is equal to root over 3g s by 2 okay that is our, our uh, first option now let us go to our uh, next question. Our next question is water falls from a height of 60 meter at the rate of 50 kg per second to operate a turbine. The loss due to frictional force are 10 percent of the input energy. How much power is generated by the turbine? Okay, so uh, from, from this height, wait. so what did he give? He gave that from a height of from a height of 60 meter, one, one, one minute, 
from a height of 60 meter water is falling okay from a height of 60 meter water is falling through this like this it is falling like this and this water is falling on the turbine and because of this uh, water flow this turbine will rotate like this now what is he saying this water is falling at height of, from a height of 60 meter at a rate of 15 kg per second okay and this water is rotating the turbine and what more did he give he gave that during this journey 10 percent of energy is lost okay now how much power is generated by the turbine you have to calculate the power generated by the turbine okay now he gave that for every one second 15 kg of uh, water is falling okay that is 15 kg of water is at a height of 60 meter that means this 15 kg will have a potential energy of potential energy of mgh that is equal to 15 into 10 into 60 okay that is equal to 9000 joules so okay so if this 15 kg mass is at a height of 60 meters that 15 kg mass of water will have a potential energy of 9000 joules okay now out of this 9000 joules 10 percent of energy is lost because of uh, friction due to air or whatever it may be so then the available effective energy will be available effective energy will be or let me take it as uh, energy the available effect uh, the available effective energy will be 9000 minus 10 percent of 9000 that is 900 that is equal to 8100 joules okay 8100 joules so now so since for every one second 15 kg of mass is uh, falling okay so that means if you go in this way for every one second we'll have an uh, energy of 8100 uh, joules that is useful energy of 8100 joules okay this energy will be used as work or will be used as work to rotate the turbine okay so the power generated by the turbine is work by time okay that is equal to energy spent uh, in the uh, energy used to do work that is 8100 joules by time taken is one second okay that is that is equal to 8.1 kilowatt if you feel that this video is useful kindly share to your friends if you have any doubts or suggestions you can comment me in the comment section do like and subscribe because your singing like and comment will encourage me for making better videos thank you